Hello, and welcome to this video for Physics 131 on the subject of calorimetry. By the end of this video, you should be able to quantify the temperature change that results from adding or removing a certain amount of heat. You should be able to define both specific heat and heat capacity. Calorimetry is the study of the impact of heat transfer. When temperature is far from the melting point or boiling point of some material and I add some heat, what happens? Well, the temperature increases. Mathematically, we would say that we add some heat and we see a change in temperature. This little symbol means proportional to. As the heat increases, so will the change in temperature. If the change in temperature were to decrease, then Q would also drop. Q would be negative in that case. So positive Q means I'm adding heat and the temperature is going up. Negative Q means I'm removing heat and the temperature is going down. So what else can impact the amount of the temperature change for a given amount of heat energy? Well, the more mass there is, the smaller the change in temperature. If I give a certain amount of energy to a small block, it will get hotter than a much larger block of the same material. So mass is going to be underneath Q. There's also going to be a material dependent property, which we label with a little case C. Metals, for example, undergo a much larger temperature change for the same amount of energy. Now typically, this expression is written in a slightly different form. Usually it's written Q equals MC delta T. Now, we just thought about the amount of temperature change for a given amount of heat in terms of mass. But often, it's more convenient to work in moles. So, for mass, we have MC delta T. Whereas, if we were to think about moles, we would not have the mass m, we would have the number of moles in, and instead of the lowercase c, specific heat, we would have the uppercase c, heat capacity. Now, the lowercase c, specific heat, that's used for mass, has the units joules per kilograms kelvin, while the capital C, heat capacity, has the units joules per mole kelvin. The specific heat and the heat capacity are going to be related by the molar mass of the substance. Now let's have a quick look at some specific heats and heat capacities for various liquids and solids. We can see some interesting trends in this table. Many elements have about the same heat capacity, about 25 joules per mole kelvin. We can also see that the specific heat of water is very high. This fact has important implications in everyday life. Moving on to gases, however, things get a little bit trickier, because it turns out that we could measure the specific heat of a gas in one of two ways. We could either measure it in a box, which means the volume is constant, in which case we specify it C sub V, or we could measure it in a balloon, in which case the pressure is con constant. We call that C sub P. The result does matter. You get different results whether you measure things in terms of constant volume or in terms of constant pressure. Here's a table for these heat capacities for different gases. We can see some interesting patterns in this table. We see that monatomic gases tend to have CV of approximately 12.47. Diatomic gases seem to all have a similar heat capacity of around 20. And polyatomic gases seem to have a heat capacity somewhere in the neighborhood of the high 20s. So it seems that the structure of the molecule is important for the heat capacity. 